Welcome to 20 Pro Tips to Save Your Life on Mythic Heroes. Literally or figuratively, whichever gets you there faster, the lives of your character and maybe yourself will be saved. Starting with number 20, the grand prize rewards for the Astrolabe are super rigged. If you're banking on the Astrolabe of Fate that you unlock at Chapter 15 to help you progress, indeed it can. You get to select two units to put in the rotational prize pool that upon your first time send spend for 5,000 gems, you will in fact get one of those characters you selected. After that initial endorphin release they planted in your brain to make you want to spin the wheel more, don't. The rates are absurdly not in your favor and gems can be much more wisely allocated elsewhere. Like tip number 19, gem shop refreshes. Now if you're wondering what to purchase in these shops, definitely copies of your main carry should be priority. But for the general marketplace and guild shop where these aren't options, our options increase. 50 gem refreshes are a great way to stock up on some stardust or runes or equipment, and yes, I said runes or equipment. Leading us to tip number 18, selecting a rune and equipment to buy in the shop. A carry character plays an important role in account progression. If you don't know what a carry is, I'll link a video explaining that at the end. But in short, it's a character you you invest the majority of your resources that in return carries you through the content of the game by themselves. Their power incrementally increases with each individual upgrade you invest into them. Runes and equipments are valuable tools for your carry to use and they also make up a decent chunk of your carry's power overall. Once you find a set you're comfortable using on that character, for example if you wanted to use fire runes on Artemis, then by all means feel free to purchase that rune in the shop. Number 17. If you want to know which purchase is the most cost effective, then the permanent pack has an infinite return value due to permanence. Yes, that means it's permanent. Which is related to tip number 16 free to play versus pay to win progression. If you're wondering why people are farther than you as free to play, ask for their strategy. If you're wondering why pay to win people are farther than you, check the VIP return. I think a lot of confusion and progression gaps between accounts is how a little bit of money can really give your account a substantial boost. Check the difference in VIP rewards after VIP 5. It becomes apparent how much of a difference it makes to someone that started the same day as you did but had VIP 9 the whole time. Tip number 15, if you've recently installed the game, then feel free to just test the waters on whatever server the game drops you on. Make all the mistakes you wish, treat the account like garbage, do generally everything you wouldn't want to do on a main account, like reckless marketplace purchases, risky resource use, and sketchy gambling systems. During this time, keep an eye out for a new server on the server list. When a new server comes out that you want your main account to be on, be sure to join that server day one of its release. Ensuring that you're there at the birth of the server further solidifies your competence towards other players in competitive content like the arena. Maintaining high ranks in the arena can net you very nice rewards over time as the arena shop has the best rewards. Tip number 14 on the contrary is to join server 1 for instant gratification when you unlock the leaderboards. The players that have been on that server for months have way more progression than any other server and they will have more diamonds to claim. Tip number 13 when summoning, 100% of your summon should be focused on maxing your main. So spend 100 gems to switch the faction to your mains when using faction summons or just wait until until its day in rotation. Number 12, you should also have a secondary main on hand in case it's impossible to summon your main. Then you will have a backup to focus on instead of spreading focus across too many units. Number 11, banners are limited but exhaust the UR in desirables. What I mean by this is the number to the left of the character is how many more chances you have to get a pity pool of that hero. Once the number reaches zero, then the banner is useless and you need to wait for it to reset. Number 10, when engaging in the Colosseum or Guild War, be sure to work the enemy from front to back and make sure your teams are fighting teams that net you the most reward. Number 9, when fighting the continuous damage Zodiac, be sure to turn off your ultimate autocast so you can manually choose four ultimates to cast without triggering the boss. Number eight, as well, you can use heroes that summon additional units to the field whose auto attacks also contribute to breaking the shell of the boss as quickly as possible on the speed check. Number seven, max your friends list as soon as possible and consistently comb out inactives from your friends list. The friendship bonuses you get in this game aren't just petty summons like in most games. They actually give you a little goodie bag of resources that are way more valuable than a 0.02% chance at an SSR. Number six, the highest level divinity gem you can acquire will always be scarce but lower level divinity gems that you can no longer use accumulate quickly. You shouldn't ever need to buy divinity gems unless specifically to unlock an important node on your main. Number 5. Some of the tier lists and gear recommendation lists floating around are a bit jank at the moment. There's a lot of individual hardworking people trying their best to make lists for us, but it's less often working together, making some of the information less accurate than it could be. Don't take up arms on someone that releases a list just because you didn't like what they said on the list. If anything, we should all push our lists together and make them more accurate. Number 4. Acknowledging the idle part of the idle game. In these games you are time gated for resources. When people ask for advice, more often than not they don't really need help, they just want to start a dialogue and make some friends. If when people ask for advice you don't have real advice to give them, just saying it's an idle game and to wait it out is not a good answer. Sometimes the answer is just to wait it out, but it's always more complicated than that. There's choices that led the player to the wall before them and there's a million different tiny things that could sway the flow of an account. Moving on to number 3, understanding the nuance of the game. Everyone experiences these games differently and no two people have been dealt the same cards on their account. Even two free-to-play players 
players with the exact same playstyle will have different stories to tell and different advice to give. It could be smart to take all advice into consideration even if it's something you don't initially agree with. Number 2. Expressing advice in a certain manner. When trying to help someone, it's best to specify heroes you're sure about because it's easy to explain the build you would use on your main. When you start getting into other units, it's hard to recommend things accurately, so be sure to clarify when you're certain and when you're not. Your strong points are the one you're sure about, and it's okay to stop there and say I haven't used another hero enough to know about them and that you'll get back to them later. And hitting the nail on the head with the hammer, number one. This type of purchase-oriented gameplay can be construed as gambling or having gamble-like qualities. These sorts of gimmicks take over the lives of people prone to addiction. A humongous contributing factor on the mobile game industry's success is its technically illegal way to gamble. This can lead to impeding development in younger audiences as well as adults. There are volumes of studies about cognitive development not actually ending at age 18, but rather age 25. Introducing destructive habits like gambling to impressionable minds can in fact aid the development of mental diseases. When you're playing these games, you always need to be sure to exercise caution and spend responsibly. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and join the Discord. But other than that, y'all, that's going to do it for me today, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.